do some game plan. All right, yeah. Switch this thing on. All right, what are we gonna play? No, he's the only one that matters now, huh? What? <laughs> Back here in the corner, tucked away, you know, forgotten about. Oh, hey. Hey, hey, man. Hey, man. What do you it, mean, hey, man? It's It's been a while. What do you, a little while? What just do you a, a little while, yeah. Oh, did you just dump me in the corner and leave me there? No, no. It, 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 it's... It's just newer, newer, the, the new tech technology. That's all it is. Yeah. It, newer technology. Yeah, newer technology. I'm 23 years old, for God's sakes. Don't get me wrong. I do. You don't have to. Don't have to get upset. Hold on. Just calm down. We'll get you out of there. We'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll do a little work. You, you kind of got a little dirty. Yeah, I got a little dirty. You stuffed me in an attic for a bunch of years, and the next thing I know, you stuffed me in the corner of a garage. Oh, yeah, you have been in the garage for a long time, until we brought you in the house. All right, stop making these excuses, then. Come over here and clean me up. This is pathetic. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, now. Oh, watch your head. Oh, you put a weight on, didn't you? So what we have here is my old gaming computer. It could be hardly considered a gaming computer now, but when I built this in around 2007, it wasn't too bad. So why don't we, uh... wow, it's so dirty. <laughs> it's so gross. It's been sitting in the garage for a while in a corner and then it made it to the basement. So let's open it up, I guess, and see what's inside since I haven't opened it up in like, 10 years. So to start off, I guess, before we open it up, this is the, this is the NZXT0 case. It's got a cool opening door here with all sorts of drive bays that we used to use back in the day. It does have a Samsung LightScribe DVD burner. Plain side over here. This side has four nice size fans that blow directly into the side of the case. Uh, it does have one top 80 millimeter fan and then the back has two more big fans, the power supply, which might be dangerous. The motherboard in here, which had no onboard graphic support, which probably maybe none of it did. And then a bunch of open holes, which is kind of, kind of concerning. Alright, let's get inside this thing. Oh, so that's sacrilegious, huh? Let's start off. I hope this works. It's gross, and hopefully, nothing's really damaged too much. Well, this is the 2.4 gigahertz wireless card. Here's a slightly dirty AEM. Oh my god. Slightly dirty AMD stock cooler. Oh wow, that's there's a lot of dust in there. Oh, so this is an EVGA 8800 GTS. That is very dirty. Oh, that's attached. What are you a... Uh, uh, burp. Audio Max HD 7.1. This is the sound card that came with this motherboard. I do remember that. Oh, hello there. Oh, 
of the stick of Corsair that is 800 megahertz, 1024 megabyte. So I had a total two gigs of RAM and a whopping 800 megahertz. And then the motherboard is an 8-bit AN9 32X. And the CPU, which you can't see, is an AMD Athlon 64X2. And it's a 6000 series. Oh, what's... Oh, oh yeah. That's, you should always, always make sure your hard drives are on their side. That's how you're supposed to store them. I don't even know how big. You will look this up. I don't know how big this is. But it's a hard drive. Um, I think... That's it besides the CD-ROM drive up there. So we'll take everything out of here and uh, clean it up a little bit or go over it. Here's an overview now that it's all out. First off, we have this Rosewill Extreme Power Supply. It's an RX 850-D-B, and I wish you could see the color. It looks chrome, but it's actually a black chrome. It, I wish, it's gorgeous. I wish they had power supplies that were this black chrome now. It looks so good. Again, this is the Abit AN932X motherboard with the Athlon 64X2-6000. A very dirty GeForce 8800 GTA, GTS by EVGA. God, I still wish they made cards. Our incredibly massive, incredibly fast 800 megahertz RAM. The audio card, the stock cooler, and this is an 80 gigabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. Um, it's definitely from uh, before this computer was put together because its manufacture date is 2001. So I guess we're going to have to clean some stuff up and hope it still works. Alright, here we have the power supply. Again, this is the Rosewill RX850 DB, although the model number is an APC 1000X Plus. Um, it I, this thing is black chrome. It's hard to see, but it is absolutely freaking gorgeous. I wish this was a modular power supply because I would put it in my new system. But uh, it's it's gorgeous. But I want to open it up to make sure that the um, there's no blown capacitors in it. Because I really don't want to plug it in and blow it up. Especially if there's caps that can be replaced inside of it. Because this thing is beautiful. It's got a little bit of corrosion back here where I think it was rubbing the case but the rest of it is minty black chrome and being a car guy I am a sucker for black chrome well doing a quick inspection with some bright light all the caps and everything seem to be good I gave it a little wipe down in a vacuum but I don't see any bulged caps everything looks pretty good yeah there's a little bit of rusties on some of the hardware, but everything else looks pretty decent. So I think we're just gonna plug her in and give it a chance. Oh wow, it's even got adjustable pots for the, the probably guaranteed for the voltage output. That's pretty cool. So you could literally get in here and fine tune the voltage. Wow, that thing's a beast. It's so heavy too. They don't make them like this anymore. All right, now it's time to clean up this uh, graphics card. That's a little rough. Oi vey. We gotta be really gentle so we don't knock anything off, but thankfully nothing's corroded on here. Oh, 
Now we're gonna take the screws off. There's a warranty sticker, but I don't think that really matters anymore. Oh, well that's, that's rock hard. So this is about the same uh, consistency as clay. So we got the uh, chips all cleaned off now. They got all the concrete paste off of that. And then I got the cover off this. And I don't know why they made it this way, but to get the cover off this, you literally have to get something under here and peel this whole sticker off, which I'm gonna have to glue back on. And then there's screws down in this hole and in this hole and then right here and then this one broke off so that takes the cover off because there's a ton of dust and i wanted to get that all out of there so now i'll be able to vacuum it out and brush it out and then there's actually a heat pipe where does that go to oh that's the center of the die the center of the die has got a heat pipe that goes up to these other ones here. I think that's surprising. I don't know if these these other fins they ah uh, there's you can barely see there's heat pipes under here too. There's a couple of heat pipes under here that are directly connected to this part, and then this heat pipe runs to the back fins. So I'll vacuum that out and get that all cleaned up. Holy mother of Yeah, that's that's a bit plugged up. Good lord. Can this come off of here? Or is that like staked in place? Okay, so the original plan was to throw some the graphics card together with some cry on that, but it's all gone. So, with a quick one day, next day delivery rather from Amazon, we got some thermal pads and some thermal paste. So let's uh, get back to the GPU and we'll get all these old pads taken off. And then uh, get the new ones cut on there. There, I got one and a half millimeter. I hope that's correct. Okay, so the graphics card's all, all done now, back together, and I snapped the frame, the fan frame and the frame back on the CPU cooler. It's pretty rough, but we'll see if it works. So let's bring over the motherboard. This got a nice wipe down and clean up. Now I'll get the RAM. Okay, so just before I put this RAM in, I have the 74 page manual for this motherboard. And this RAM, unlike most RAMs where you'd have a one and then a space, these RAMs actually have to go directly next to each other. And I don't know if I can get it into the one and two slot. Let's see, it's awfully close to the CPU cooler. 
Oh, yep. And then this will go directly next to it. Unlike a lot of motherboards, it's one, two, three, and four, and it does say in here for dual channel, two slot, two dims, use one and two, or three or four. It does not, it's not uh, spaced out like you would see in most of the modern motherboards. So there we do. That's ready to get installed. It does. This thing has so many crazy power. Um, so, for example, you have your main power pin here, and then you actually have to put an, uh, a Molex power here, and that's what delivers power to the PCI slots. And then um, there's a couple other power. There's, I believe there's, yeah, ATX 12 volts up here. Then it has an aux fan. There's a system fan here. Um, then there's another aux fan down here. Here's all the SATAs. And then I believe, yeah, the hard LEDs, power switch and LED stuff's all right here. Okay, this is back up here. And I moved everything else out of the way because I wanted to pull all the cables out of here and clean it up. Because, oh, it's very gross in here. Um, and I wanted to see where all these cables that came in the back went too, but I didn't even notice when I was picking it up that it, this actually has two USB, a microphone, headphone, and a firewire port on it. So we're gonna pull all these cables out and uh, try to clean this up a little bit. I believe this is the reset button. Yep, reset button. It's inside the door. And then the power button's on the door with a power light. Then the other cables go to the board. I already moved the optical drive, which is a light scribe uh, Samsung drive. That was just in here. It's got quick insulation brackets. Super gross. That's why I want to. I want to. I need to wash this out with a, a hose. This case is aluminum, so it's super lightweight. Actually, really nice. And this is this is the downfall of this cage. Is this this is the hard drive cage? It's got you know this is this is actually where that cable went through. That's why I couldn't get it out. But you can't take this out, and you can't take this cage out for the all the front drives. That's the only downfall is it's all in there. It's all riveted in place. Because this would be a cool case to upgrade to like a modern system. But you'd have to drill all the rivets out to get those drive cages out or this cage is out to fit anything cool in here like a water cooler or anything like that. Not that there's anywhere for a AIO to pump water. Does have one, two, four. So it's four on the front, five, six, seven hundred and twenty millimeter fans though. So it definitely has quite a bit of fan. And then it's got a slot for two eighty millimeter fans also. I'll be damned, it's a it's a push pin like they use in cars, but significantly nicer. These even have felt washers under them. They don't make cases like this anymore. This case doesn't weigh anything now. I'm gonna take this part too. This is these are this is rough, unfortunately. But it might give us a chance to scrub this panel up. Oh yeah, bare aluminum. Dang. <laughs> Okay. 
now we can give this a proper scrubbing and maybe a spritz of paint. Now this is a flimsy panel. It's a shame the paint is completely falling off right here though. That's a lot of fans to clean. I threw a little paint on this cover. It really needs a fine sandpaper, which I don't have to sand it down and redo it completely because it's aluminum and unless you do treat it right, it won't paint well. So let's get these fans put back on this cover so we can get this thing back together again. Now this got a little clean job with all this aluminum that's on here it was all nasty. So I a little bit of buffing wheel cleaning compound. This metal polish, my Dura coating, worked awesome on not only the aluminum but even took some of the scratches out of this plastic, surprisingly. I didn't take any video of it, but uh, here's what it looked like washing this case in our wash tub in the basement. And here's our nice clean case. Again, a little scrub job in there. It's still not super pretty, but it's significantly cleaner. So I'll get the feet on, and we'll get that front panel back on, and we'll go from there. All right, we got the front cover on. That was not worth making you sit here and watch through even in fast forward. All the input cables are in. Um, I even did a little bit of work on deciphering some of these since I had all these wires that were down here tied off. Um, and that's because, um, where's it at? One of these wires, I believe the audio one was plugged in on the, in the motherboard and the other one on the chip, or on the, actual audio card but i don't remember i had a lot of these were tied off all these down here were tied off and just this ac 97 was plugged in so i'm gonna put the motherboard in now try to keep all these things out of the way Now we'll get this absolutely beautiful black chrome Rosewell power supply in here. I just love this thing. I really wish I could still find one in black chrome like this. I'm in love with this power supply. I need to find two more screws. Uh, it must have only been two in there. All right, back with hardware, and this is the hardware set of what's left over from my other computer build that's got the Lian Lee Land Cool 2 mesh case in it, which is an absolutely phenomenal case. I absolutely love it. Not sure, though, if there will be any screws in here. I'm pretty sure these are too small. No, they are not. They are perfect. I'll be damned. Oh, they look so much better on that. Their black screws on that black chrome power supply look way better. Okay, now we'll uh, get to work routing all these cables and then stuff the graphics card in there afterwards. Tell you what, that's the downfall of these cases. These old cases, there's no cable routing. That's for sure. What a train wreck. I suppose I can hide everything in this optical bay, but... Yeah, that might work. I'll put the drive in first, though. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get... You know what? I think I'm gonna get all this routed, and then... We'll come back. Alright, we got everything all tied up in here now, and we have... The uh, power LED, the power switch, the reset button, and I think uh, the hard drive LED is all in here. Here we have the firewire connection. This is the panel connector for the uh, AudioMax 
seven HD 7.1, which is uh, the soundboard that came with this motherboard. Um, this will go in here, and then this HD, well, not the HD audio, excuse me, the AC97 plugs into this port here, and that's why the other ones were tied back, is these, none of these other ones get used, um, because they're all individual outs that are all tied in to the AC97. Um, I, you could probably clip these, but if I ever want to use this in a different case or something, or a different computer down the road, I would, I want to get, get rid of those, so... We'll get this AudioMax board in here. All right, now let's get the graphics card in place. So I do have a Wi-Fi card. Um, I think I'm gonna put it in just to cover the oh, just to take up the slot. But being there's no antenna, the antenna's pieces missing or gone or something off this, it probably won't do anything. All right, there we have it. The cables are routed as best as I could. Um, there's a... Uh, it's kind of a hot mess in there. There's definitely not any um, routing like there are in the newer cases. And unfortunately, this is the best routing path I could take for that plug. I tried going up the side, but it was too close to the, the bus heat sink and this cable's hanging out here because this will be the one that connects to those side fans. But I mean, it definitely looks better than it did ages ago when it was just a total, all the wires went down the side here in a total cluster. So I guess now it's just one thing to do is uh, plug it in and pray that the power supply isn't blown up inside. Okay, so here goes the ultimate test does a 28 year old power supply by Rosewell explode oh god oh okay okay that's I got lights lights in there that's good okay right oh this is so I'm so scared Nothing. Oh, wait. <gasps> oh my. It's alive. It's alive. I got postcodes. I got postcodes. I don't know what 7F is. Oh, that blue LED fan is so cool in that old power supply, both sides. All right, we got lights though. What do we got? Well, it, it didn't blow up, so that's a good sign. But now we're gonna have to check out. Let's see, is that fan still on there? Yep. Front fan sounds a little funny. It might be a ribbon on the uh, thing there. Okay, what is? All right. Well, let me check some postcodes and we'll come back. Okay. So seventy-five seven F. So we got. Detect and install all IED devices, hard drive, so that's that. And then 7F is switch back to text mode if full screen logo is supported. If error occurs, report errors and wait for keys. If no errors occur, F1 keys, press and continue. So I think that's, I'm going to try 
bringing a monitor over. The only problem is I, I don't have a PS2 mouse or keyboard, so I don't know if those are going to work. But it, it's starting up, and it seems to be going through its checks, which is all seems to be okay. Because it doesn't... Yeah, it goes through all the test functions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a monitor over here and see if the USB keyboard works. I don't know if this old bastard supports USB keyboards. God, I hope so. Because otherwise, I don't, I, I've heard that some of the adapters don't even work. It doesn't smell like burning. That's good. Okay, so now we got ourselves a mouse, which is actually, I, um, I think it's actually the same mouse that I got when I used to use this computer forever ago. It's an old Logitech G5 mouse. It's even got the weights and stuff in them. And then I don't know if this is going to work again because I don't know if this supports BIOS or uh, if it supports the USB in the BIOS. Is this thing on? Where's the damn on button? How do you turn this thing on? Oh, never mind. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, complete. <gasps> it does support BIOS from the USB. Oh, this is so super. Oh, how exciting. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, let's see. And now, I don't know what's on this drive. There there might be absolutely nothing on this hard drive. Um, let's see. It's so super. What are we looking for here? <laughs> there you go. Look at that. SATA one, that's the DVD, that's my burner. So that gets drives, we're good in there. Advanced BIOS features. Let's see, all right, let's, let's see if, it, if there's anything on that hard drive. I'm pretty sure this might be where we're halted and I have to download Windows XP. Wait a minute, holy sheep shart. Oh, oh, we don't got keyboard here. We gotta wait for it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's a problem, because I can't. Crab nuggets. I have no control over this. Come on, raid. Oh, wait, here we go. What if they change this to BIOS? Let's see if this works. No, I got stuck maybe in the boot. 96 FF. What do we got? What is that? Hey, buddy, yeah, yeah. I think one of these didn't work. Let me try this. One of those, I think, was not the right one, if I remember. Oh, my God, no way. Holy crap. I knew there was one of them was not right. Oh, my baby. Look at that. Holy Windows XP. We might actually have to totally reinstall. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh my. Never mind. You got a keyboard yet? Your computer might be at risk. Yeah, no crap. What's the date it thinks this is? January 1st, 2007. Yeah, this hasn't been used in a long time. Okay. So, I spent about a day almost two days trying to get games to run on this thing and I cannot find any games for some reason that will support 
um, uh, the on-screen display, display the on-screen display software from OS from Rivia Tuner, the OSD. Um, I all the games. I don't know if it's because they're not of the right. Uh, I don't know engine or whatever they run. So I've tried Starcraft. I didn't try SimCity. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Deus Ex. I don't think this will run it. Mech Warrior 4 Vengeance. I haven't tried the original Half-Life, and I tried Duke Nukem. None of those at all worked. Um, I don't know if The Sims will even run on this, Sims 4, but I'm missing the disc too, because my daughter had it, and it disappeared. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I only got a couple of uh, the benchmark software to show it up, but unfortunately, the benchmark software that I found, you have to log online to view your scores, and this isn't hooked up to the internet right now. Um, I tried making a guess and it work on my Wi-Fi just to let it through for a hot minute, and it would not connect. This card's probably dead. It's missing an antenna anyways. It did have some, like, two bars of signal, but it was downloading at one megabyte per second and then failed. However, before I try any slightly, slightly sketchy software on it, I did buy this 240 gigabyte SSD. It's a Team Force Vulcan Z, and we're gonna stick this in here and I'm gonna clone this hard drive onto this because I want to see, I'd like to see first off how fast it will run off of this because the Windows boot is super slow. If it will work at all, and also, I'm curious, well, I'm not curious, but I, I don't want to lose, there's a bunch of old pictures on this hard drive from when my kids were little, and I don't want to lose that. And this is a hard drive from 2001, and somehow it still works. So I figured that, worst case, I can get this in here, clone this drive over, and then if this does dry, die, I don't lose anything, or if something sketchtastic happens to this, if I put it online... It's whatever, because I don't have any accounts on this or anything anyway. So if it does get wiped with viruses, I have a backup. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm leaving this on. I'm going to install this with it on. It's off, but the 5-volt standby is on. And I don't want, or maybe the 12-volt standby, the standby is on. And I don't want to turn it off, because last time I shut this off for a while, that's a new battery in there uh, under the, the CMOS battery, but it it's had a CMOS fault. And I, um, it was a nightmare to get this to run again. So it could be the drive on its way out. It doesn't sound bad or anything, but we're going to give this a whirl anyways. And we're going to take this and just plug it in bloody hot. It should be okay, right? I would mount this nicely in the hard drive cage enclosure, but I don't have any of the brackets, which sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, where are we now? After a lot of failing, miserable failing, at trying to get the old hard drive transferred over to this new solid state drive. I tried multiple different programs, um, but they kept failing. And I looked it up and it suggested do a check disk. I did a check disk, but as you see, I had a bad cluster errors in here. And it was, it would freeze at some point a little farther after these. This is like issues with The Sims 2 is where these files are located. Uh, and then the other ones were stuff I'd put on recently. Like, maybe the, the, the hard drive is so old it was having issues writing the new stuff I put on, which was like uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 to see if that would work, and a couple other games that I was trying. So it would, it would fail at those, and it would just lock up completely. So I went back, I said, the heck with it, I'll go delete those. So I deleted everything I put on. Then I ran check disk again this morning, and now we're past all that, and it didn't even bother with the stuff I deleted, because it's not there anymore. We got through the file data verification and we're on the, the verifying the free space now at 25 percent so it looks okay um i was originally trying to i can't remember the file it was a 
Norton Ghost. I was trying to use to the ghost image, and that was the one that was failing before. But then I had found a gift I got from my grandfather-in-law was a Cronus backup. He got me forever and ever and ever ago, and I tried that, and actually. That was the one that looked most promising, so that's what we're going to go with next after this is finishing verifying the free space. So it's at 30% now, so hopefully we'll be able to transfer this onto the hard drive, the solid state drive from this hard drive, which obviously is having issues and must be dying, which doesn't surprise me. It's from 2001. It's a 23 year old hard drive. The fact that it still runs blows my mind. But uh, I guess we'll catch back up when this is done. Hey, we're back in Windows after the check disk completed. So glad it went through that and everything was fine now. After deleting those files that were causing issues in the check disk with the errors. So now we'll just stuff the Acronos boot disk in there, restart, and try transferring or cloning the drive to the SSD. All right, the Cronus True Image loader is started. We're gonna do a True Image. This will take a second. All right, now that this is loaded, we're gonna to go to tools, tools and Utilities. We're gonna do a Clone Disk. All right, we'll do an Automatic. Next, now that's gonna be Source Disk is Disk One, Target Disk is Disk Two, uh, and Windows is Disk Zero and Disk One, but. So right now it's empty, and then it's going to put, this is the partition that, uh, section that's the old drive. Let me proceed, and then this takes a while, so hopefully when we come back to it, it'll be uh, transferred over. All right, time for some benchmark. Finally, I had uh, downloaded 3 Mark 6 because that's the last, the most recent one that would run on Windows XP and unfortunately I had an issue at the beginning because you can only view your scores when you upload them online and I wasn't online so I had to run a 50 foot ethernet cable to the basement and push, put this untrustworthy system that's all vulnerable on the internet and then it wouldn't still let me view them because Explorer and Firefox that I had was super outdated so I downloaded MyPal and MyPal is a Firefox based browser that's, uh, I think it's open source, that runs on um, Firefox. I think it's like a Firefox based system, but it works. I mean, I didn't choose DuckDuckGo, that's just what it comes with. Don't hate me. But uh, now it will let you actually read it. So we're going to try this benchmark, and this is all stock. Oh, it's working. Hopefully you can... Hopefully you can see the numbers up there. But we're running at the stock settings on the uh, 8800 GTS, which I think is 513 megahertz. After we finish this though and get a score, we'll crank it up. All right, there we go. Let's see the results online. Oh, submission failed. Let's see if I can save this. All right, the submission failed, and I don't know why, but this was my score that I ran before I started recording. Um, it had a couple errors for the measurement data and system info, but I downloaded system info for the legacy systems I don't know if that's why, or maybe it needs us to reboot the computer, but we got an 8,741 um, CPU score of 2,236, HDR, SM3 score of 3783, and SM2 score of 3982. Here's the uh, info again. 800 GTS, 640 megabyte. This is a 640 meg. 513 clock frequency, 7892 memory <coughs> core frequency. 
Okay, we're gonna absolutely smash this thing with Afterburner. Uh, I ran this way before, that's 670 megahertz in 1030 on the memory clock. Which actually comes up to 675 megahertz in 1026 megahertz memory. This worked before. We'll see what the uh, numbers change out to be if it, it becomes more powerful. The GPU is uh, 58 degrees, 59 degrees C. Uh, the processor is 32 degrees on one core and 28 degrees on the other core. I'm wondering if the GPU will get any higher than the 61. I think it was at 65 was our max last time. I'll have to check it in hardware info. Oh, it's gonna work. Let's see what we got this time. 9,894. That's quite a bit higher, I believe. I don't remember what the last one was. I logged in this time, now I have a screen name. It's definitely higher. 4,607, 2.0 score, 4,557 for the 3.0, and a 2,233 for the CPU. I definitely can overclock this, I think. Same settings, of course. Well, except for the, um... Well, it still, it still shows the stock clock frequencies, I believe, doesn't it? Nope, 513 megahertz. 1030 on the... Yeah, see, the memory clock... It's 1026, but it says 792. Interesting. Let's see. There we go. So, yeah, we from 8,741 to 9,894 with just a max in that dial out. I feel like I got more in it. It didn't even, the graphics card was fine. Uh, in fact, let's check hardware info. Let's go to our GPU. Which is down here, right? Up, down, up, down. CPU. GPU. Highest GPU temperature was 61 degrees C. That's crazy. Highest shader clock was 1454. No, I'm sorry. Highest temperature was 72 degrees C. And 1566 on the shader clock. 675 on the geometry clock, 1030 on the memory clock. That's pretty cool. We'll have to, I'm going to have to run this on my new computer and see what it gets. I also have the Tropics and Sanctuary. Um, we can run those too. And uh, I'm going to run those. I, I guess I'll run those. And then we'll, because uh, they're old school demos. But I'm not gonna make you sit through this all. But um, I honestly, shaders are on high. Anastrophe is middle of range for where it was when I started. Anti-aliasing is off. I don't know if I should turn that on or not. I'm not good. I don't know much about doing these. But uh, we'll run this and see what we get, and then I'll be back. Oh yeah, we want to do the benchmark. All right, she's benchmarking now. 45 frames per second. GPU's still 72 though, she's warm still. All right, I'll come back when we get this done. All right, Sanctuary was a lot, a lot um, quicker to run. Um, what we got is a 50 FPS score of 2130.
minimum of 30.4 frames per second and a max of 67.7. Again, I don't know what other settings to run in this, but if anybody has any ideas, you can let me know. Um, I see what it is.